Hi everyone, welcome. We're down here in my wormery and I got a number of things set up over here. Preparing to feed one of my bins, I've got grit, worm chow, got my little cheat sheet of information, and I try now to position my squirt bottle that's got the BTI and mosquito dunks solution in it as close as possible to the bin because I'm trying to prioritize the application of that stuff into the very beginning of my routine because it does seem like that's the best way to try to tackle the flying insect situation is to um, spray a bin on first contact right on the top surface so I'm preparing to put that glove on and get to work feeding these little guys and we'll uh, talk more about them once we're underway it does seem to me like this stuff really is doing the trick. It's, uh, it seems to be reducing the number of insects in all of my systems considerably. Here, I don't know how many times we've had a chance to apply it, maybe once or twice so far. I think it's about a month and a half since I've been putting the BTI into my systems. And even places where maybe there's been a few applications and maybe there's really no longer a problem, it might still be a good idea to keep at it. You know, I could see a couple little flying insects popping out here and there as I'm disturbing them. So they're certainly not they're certainly not um eliminated quite yet. So you know, maybe right on the paper too. I don't really know too much about where these flying insects are gonna tend to leave their eggs. So who knows? Maybe it's on the paper. Let's make sure the paper's treated. This paper's um Getting pretty beaten up. Seems like the worms have nibbled away quite a bit at it. Oh, yeah. I can see a coffee filter under there, too. Well, it almost seems like this thing is in four separate pieces. It's going to be very um, <laughs> tricky to try to uh, put it back together. A little Humpty Dumpty syndrome going on over there. But I still think we've got like four pretty good size chunks of uh, paper there that we could spread out across the top as our top covering. Maybe just give that little piece of newspaper one last commission doing that job and then it'll eventually get promoted, <laughs> get used as bedding in the feeding. So 30 days, yeah, you would expect to find lots of large chunks of stuff. I mean, yeah, usually I'll use mostly this finely shredded stuff, but I'll also, you know, throw in large pieces as well. Moisture in here seems to be pretty good. Obviously as you're applying the uh, BTI, oh, did I not treat the top surface yet? I know we did the newspaper, but let's just make sure that any sort of little hidey holes and potential nesting spots or whatever the heck you call it when it comes to insects. <laughs> make sure we put some of this stuff in here try to help uh, welcome the next generation to their demise. All right, <laughs> how gruesome. All right, we're, um, yeah, I don't know if you'd noticed all this information I had on here. Basically, it's a young bin. The uh, origin of these worms was when I relaunched my outdoor worm bin, which is now what I call version four, this incarnation. So obviously its predecessor was version three. In version 3, the worms that came out of the previous uh, worm bag, those little guys, I think an estimated 3,400 plus worms were used to launch off version 4. And these are just the worms that are living in here that came out of the cocoon nursery that was left behind, you know. So we didn't go straight to using the castings from the outdoor worm bag version 3. We held on to them. And over two haul-outs, we came up with that estimated 829 worms that live in here. So that's not a very impressive number, but probably enough to get a new system started with. So I would say that this is starting a, a system with sort of a small to medium-sized population, maybe more medium. So if you want to talk about starting a population with, with a small number, I've done that too. And I, I started much smaller than... 829 which is the estimated count in here 
the smallest number of worms that I had success reviving into a pretty good sized population over the course of a few months was a population that you could at times count on, I don't know, your fingers and your toes. Yeah, that might be an exaggeration, but still. A couple dozen. Now down here, I didn't review the video from what we fed last time. I wonder if there's leftovers enough for us to identify it. I could tell this is coffee down here. Perhaps not spread it into the neighboring materials as well as it could have been. These little white specks, I'm not sure what we're seeing there. Whether those are insects or grit added as part of the feeding. I don't know. But you can see the worms are enjoying something, whatever it is they got last time. Hopefully they'll enjoy what they get this time too, but if you noticed, there was a sort of a theme, right? There's stuff in here. It's hard to tell. It's all getting all that um, humidity is condensing onto these frozen items, so they're sort of camouflaged by the frost. But they're things that I classify as slow. Avocado, mainly because of the pit, and there's also just a pit. There's a full avocado with its own pit, plus... Um, only a pit. <laughs> that makes sense. I should put a picture to the word. You can better understand what I'm talking about. Just the pit. A little bit of fruit on there. Residual. But here's a hole within its shell. Apple, to me, I don't know. For me, it's a slow composting thing. And it's, I don't know about peppers. You know, I thought peppers actually go pretty quick in a worm bin. So I think the only reason it's there is because I... Don't classify it as a slow thing. It's more of a thing that I typically, for whatever reason, don't tend to include in my worm bins. I don't know why. Very nice. Look at all these little guys in here. They're all spread out. Some of them are kind of surrounding something that they seem to have zeroed in on. One of my more recent feedings from a day or two ago. I don't know when it was, but... It's when you're feeding your night crawlers, somehow, not so much about the Euros. The Euros are a little bit more behavior-wise and appearance-wise. They're kind of more similar to Red Wigglers, but those African night crawlers, they're kind of solitary creatures. So they don't do this sort of mobbing together and putting on a show for us. <laughs> That's why, if, as far as if you're going to get into worm farming and you want to do it for the entertainment factor, go with the type of worms that um, produce these little mobs, you know, that you can try to seek out after you know you've given them a yummy feeding. If you come back in time before there's still some left for them to be jumping on, they'll probably be doing so in large numbers, little crowds of them zeroing in on the good stuff. All right, we didn't really get a, a chance to observe how things are working on the outer edges. We just sort of went straight after the center where the feeding had been applied. So let's just sort of follow through with what we started here. By getting this feeding in here, a couple of really large chunks of frozen stuff. <laughs> I think to be kind, we're going to put down some bedding, but you know what? What I'm bringing in now is not my fancy shredded paper. This is just a piece of paper that had been top covering on one of my systems where I have now opted to let the system air dry a little bit better. So I've even gone so far as to remove all, all the toppings uh, off that thing. So that means I've gone straight to first removing its plastic a few feedings ago, eventually reducing the paper coverings to this only being the only covering it had for an interval between feedings, and at this point it has no coverings. So this paper, hopefully they'll enjoy this fairly tattered, fairly weathered, worm bin paper. This ain't just something I pulled in off the front porch. This is not a, a freshly delivered newspaper by any means. This has been sitting in worm bins for a while. But although I don't know, maybe since I allowed it to dry, maybe it's um, maybe it's not really as lively as it could be as far as bringing in microbes and stuff. So this must have been, yeah, this coffee filter will shred it. A little bit not that we have to and yeah because if you're looking around you find big chunks of cardboard that the bin was built with it seems illogical to require anything better <laughs> or smaller although better is sort of a relative thing right 
All right, I don't know. No fancy application method here, and there's no way to spread it around, because even if I wanted to jam my thumb in here and try to break it apart a little bit, as you could probably do with a, a rotting apple, when it's frozen, it's not quite the same thing. <laughs> And, you know, here I'm wondering, is there any breach? I would hope there's at least some little place for them to sneak in. If not, next time we come in here, we'll make an opening that they can get into it with. But for now, it's just going in frozen. Not much I could do as far as access. Now, I've also got my worm chai. You saw that I was kind of showing off there. My newest recipe includes nuts. Now, actually, that my, pre my last recipe already had nuts, cashews. To be specific so this new version has those cashews in it but now the new thing added this time was beans <laughs> so I'm playing around with different things I'm finding in my cupboard stuff that I think can go into the blender and get pulverized into a material that's kind of small and granular and easy to pour although I do need to mix certain things like the nuts with drier materials because otherwise it would just end up like a you know like a peanut buttery pasty uh, goo so I do feel a little bit tempted to bring in some extra bedding and it's rem it's reminding me of the fact that sometimes now that I got this cool shredder I sort of neglect the fact that I've also got a full box of leaves up on the shelf I think the leaves deserve a little bit more air time because <laughs> the uh, shredded paper and cardboard mixture has been stealing the show. So you know what? Let's queue up the supplier leaves because as you can see it's full to the top of the box and it's been that way just sitting there for a couple weeks. So it's like that poor kid on the bench never gets to play, play the game until... You finally realize, hey, what about that dude? He's been sitting there on the bench waiting to play all day. Well, let's give that little guy a chance, right? Get the leaves back into action. The leaves used to be my de facto bedding. It was just what I provided the worms all the time because sometimes I would take paper and shred it for them using a really lousy shredder that I had. And then I... Uh, and then I upgraded, got myself this really nice shredder. Now I got tons of paper that I can, I've been collecting paper and cardboard so that I can make nice bedding for these little guys out of it. But I've also got these nice leaves that I put away every autumn. Leaf bag sitting outside full of the stuff, just waiting to get used. And all I think I need to do is sort of remind myself that it's there and that it's uh, ready for use. And I should be generous with it, because I somehow also feel that by varying the bedding types that we use, it just somehow improves the structure of the finished castings. I think other people will comment similarly. I've, I think I've seen observations like that in other people's videos of people that, you know, may have recently switched to composting with almost exclusively shredded paper, and maybe from a previous supply of bedding materials had experience on what the castings were like prior and noticed that the castings do somehow differ when they're um, paper you know if you think about it paper what's paper paper is wood pulp so you're al you're already giving the worm something extremely fine to start with doesn't have to work very hard to break it down kind of makes their digestive system lazy. <laughs> don't don't quote me on that. I'm not a biologist. <laughs> I don't know anything about making people's digestive systems lazy or active. So we promised this piece of paper that we'd try to return it to its post so it can continue in valor with its current duties that it's done so fabulously until now. So I think we can honor its wishes to let it stand guard one more time out here on the surface. But you know what, buddy? I think you know what's next, and you deserve it. This little guy's going to get upgraded next time. I think it's going to go in there right where the other newspaper went. <laughs> it's going to go in as bedding. So this is just me delaying just to try to see if I can look around to see if I forgot anything vital before I cover things up. But I think we've covered all the bases. At least I hope so. 
that's the beauty of raising worms. If you miss something or do something out of order, they're so flexible. They're so capable of taking care of themselves that it almost doesn't matter. <laughs> All right, everyone, that's it for today's check-in with our 30-day Red Wiggler system. And they're doing great. I think they're doing a wonderful job in here. And, you know, with a feeding like that, we could probably come in pretty soon and give them more because it's going to take time for that apple to eventually get even started. That avocado, who knows, might not even be breached by the time we come in here. So that feeding is almost all, as if it's a, a non-feeding. You know, only going to be in the bin getting started. Next time we check in here, this stuff's going to look like it was put in there brand new. At least that's my best guess. We'll see next time we come in. All right, everyone. Have a great day. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, and I hope you did, please don't forget to leave me a quick thumbs up before you go. And if you haven't done so already, please also consider subscribing to the channel. Oh, there's also that join button if you want to maybe provide a little bit of financial support. That's also very much appreciated. All right, everyone, have a great day. Thanks so much for watching. Bye now.